want to make it quiet then. Ray doesn't have time for quiet. Make entrance through the front. Sonny, metal, move. Metal, on you. Hey there, good afternoon everyone. I'm Jackie Alamini, a congressional correspondent and author of the Early 202, the Post Early Morning Newsletter. Today, we are going to look at the streaming program SEAL Team based on the real life US Navy elite special force. Two of the driving forces of that program join me now. David Bornays is the star of the show, playing the role of Jason Hayes, and is also an executive producer and director on several episodes. Spencer Hudnett has been with the show since it premiered in 2017 and has risen to the role of executive producer. Thanks so much to you both for joining us. Happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Let's start off with an episode that aired on October 24th and has been getting quite a lot of attention, uh, titled 9-10, you recap the events uh, that the characters experience as they flash back to September 11th in 2001. David, what were your emotions when you were shooting that program? It's tough. I mean, when you're presenting that type of subject matter, you automatically remember where you were when those events happened. So you automatically kind of revert back to what, where was I? What was going on in my life? Um, the tragedy of that day itself was uh, extremely overwhelming. Um, so when we had decided to um, attack a subject matter of this magnitude, uh, I know this is one that Spencer was very dialed into and had had this idea for some time. It was really a revelation of taking these characters and going back 20 years ago and to examine where they were at that time and how they got into the fight on the war and terror. Um, so for me personally, it was um, it was very daunting. It was, um, you know, pulling up memories, obviously, of of seeing the tragedy that occurred on that day and also applying it to the character and how he would go forward with that. Um, so. It was um, it was a it was a challenge. Um, there were some adversities within it, but we were so proud to be able to tackle a subject matter of this magnitude, as well as actually shoot there at the Ground Zero area, and um, it was uh, very humbling. Spencer, what made the creators of the show want to commemorate 9/11 in this way? Well, I think given you know the show is about war fighters and special operators, and this is the 20th anniversary of the war on terror, the 20th anniversary of 9/11, it just felt you know this show truthfully probably wouldn't exist without that horrible day, and so it felt like we could really um, sort of inspect you know what that day did to all of these people um, before they were in the Navy, before they made this commitment to serve, and really just document how that day um, changed everything for all of us. And so um, yeah, it had a lot of special meaning to to a number of us. One of our executive producers on the show um, was part of the Abbottabad raid. And, you know, so obviously there's a connection, there's a deep connection uh, within this show. Um, and so, you know, and me personally, I was in New York City on that day. Um, and so it's just an idea that David and Chris Trulak and I have been talking about for a number of years, and it just felt like the timing was right to do it uh, this season. That was actually going to be my next question, Spencer. You know, what did the episode trigger for you about your own memories of 9-11 and, and what else do you remember about that day, especially being in New York? Yeah, I mean, it was really, um, you know, we went and shot at Ground Zero, um, which was really powerful and emotional for all of us. We took the cast, um, you know, we recreated um, Ground Zero here, uh, actually in Los Angeles on our lot. Um, and, and honestly, seeing um, people, you know, post uh, collapse walking up uh, the street was really it was really powerful it brought me back to that day um, brought me back to you know how much has changed how innocent we were back then um, truly an emotional an emotional episode an emotional time um, so it's um, you know even even though it's already been only it's been 20 years it's 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 those memories you know really live on um, and we tr just tried to honor you know the victims and remember you know that day is really about those who lost their lives yeah, I know what you mean about 20 years sounds like a really long time, but it feels just like yesterday for me, too. I was in elementary school in Westchester, New York, so right outside of the city and uh, still remember my social studies teacher in third grade yelling, it's World War III with the radio on. Um, mm. But uh, David, I'm wondering what memories this uh, triggered for you and, and what you remember about that day. 
Well, we were about a month away from uh, of getting married, and I know that my mother had called me up on the telephone, and it was early, and at the time I was shooting another show, and obviously everything was shut down. But my mother on the phone was like, you know, the, one of the towers had been hit, and it, just to kind of wrap your head around that and then turn the television on and see the, the these tragic events kind of unfold. Um, and then as the day progresses, um, knowing people that you're that you knew or had been in those planes or in those buildings it started to bec- it started to become more and more like wow i knew this person who was there um and that's when it really st- it starts to become real and you look outside and i was in los angeles at the time and you look at the sky and i remember all air traffic was ceased and nobody was flying at that one specific moment and it was just very eerie and scary and extremely overwhelmingly sad um, but a day you just don't, you just, you remember exactly where you were and what you were doing. And some of the scenes in this episode flash back to a happier time with your wife, Alana, and, and were particularly well received. What is it like watching the actor Travis James play a younger 2001 version of your character? It's exciting. It was very challenging for the casting directors, and I think that they really did an amazing job. Um, a really big shout out to them and how they cast all of the characters. But I remember him coming in, and we had talked, and I met him, and I just immediately felt the 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 joyful innocence of myself at that age, and how he portrayed that into Jason Hayes twenty years in the past. Um, so we got along pretty well. We had a really great long conversation. I fell, filled him in on some insights of, of how I play this particular character. Um, so I remember seeing a still image when I was at, when we were prepping the the shoot um, in New York and we had received it and we looked at it, our DP had it, and I saw the picture of him and the girl playing Alana and our little kid. And the still image alone just evoked such energy and power and like, what is going on? This is this moment is going to change our lives forever. So I just remember being impacted by that and seeing that just that picture from the set. And I want to talk a little bit about the day to the day and how you guys put together these episodes. Each episode is very intense, can take you to any corner of the globe. Spencer, what is the creative process like when the producers and writers are hashing this out and trying to decide where and what the SEAL team's next adventure is going to be? Well, you know, we heavily rely on uh, the military veterans that actually work with us on the show. Uh, I employ two former Navy SEALs as writers. Uh, They're in the writer's room with us. Um, And so really it all starts out, you know, well before we start shooting, we have it all mapped out um, by the time the camera rolls on day one. Um, And, you know, I mean, the challenge is not to repeat ourselves after 90 plus episodes um, and honestly try to follow where, you know, where the world is going. And, you know, I think we've, we've had our finger on um, the pulse a little bit in terms of um, following the trajectory of this war on terror. And so we're really trying to, you know, in, an, in a non-political way, but we want to stay relevant. We want to be, you know, again, this season we're pushing into Africa, which feels like after Afghanistan is maybe the next uh, staging ground of the forever war. Um, and so it's really, you know, between the number of veterans that we employ, um, we're getting input from everywhere. And, and again, just trying to um, tell the most authentic story possible. How do you stay non-political, though, when, you know, uh, as you noted, that sort of the potential genesis of this series maybe roots back to 9-11, which is such a politically loaded and transformative moment for so many Americans and really, I think, has shaped, you know, 20 years of our politics here? Well, you know, I think we try to be, the show is really about the war fighters and not the war fighting. Um, you know, we don't really try to comment on you know, whether or not we should be fighting these wars. I think there's a subtext to what we're saying, Um, but we're really trying to examine what 20 years of this war on terror has done to our men and women in uniform. Um, And so I think that's, you know, I think everyone across uh, the aisle can uh, agree that we need to be, we need to support the men and women who keep us safe. And so I think that's allowed us to stay kind of above some of the political uh, conversations that are going on right now. And David, I'm wondering what are a couple of your favorite episodes from the past five seasons? 
Well, it's so hard to, to kind of pinpoint. I, I really enjoy the pilot because it's really is the jumping point of the series and it's so youthful and it's so fresh and alive and everybody's kind of on edge with their energy finding the characters and there's just such magic that happens when you're shooting uh, and moments. I remember arriving in New Orleans and coming off of a, you know, a, a, a Hilo and, and a moving chopper and having to do this scene with Max who plays Clay and I had to kind of pull him to me and said, you didn't have my six, you didn't do what I told you to do. And it was for me like this energized kind of moment for this character to kind of solidify his sense of a leader, but also put in his his brothers in place that we all have to operate as a team right this is what the show is about um so i really enjoyed i enjoyed the pilot there's just so many i i really love the episode um when jason was you know with the dog and he was lost in the snow and trying to fight for the dog's survival and it, there, there's just such touching moments in that with the animal that it really struck a big nerve for me um, but it, you know, every episode has this nerve of touching into the light of the darkness of their minds and exposing something that needs to be addressed. And I think that's what drives these characters in the show. And I see that your Zoom background looks like a hotel room. I'm wondering where you are in the world right now and uh, if you're shooting from somewhere particularly exotic. So, you know, we're not we're not in any kind of an exotic place. We were I was just out actually doing some location scouting. Um, I'm directing this upcoming episode. So we were down in the dock areas and I started at 6 a.m. and then we we're downtown and then we're somewhere else in Los Angeles. So we slipped into here to do this interview with you. And uh, so we're not in any secretive location, uh, but uh, it's just briefly to stay with you guys. <laughs> and Spencer, how long does it take to shoot an entire show on average? So this season we are doing, uh, we shoot each episode in seven days, which is incredibly fast uh, for any show, but for a show that, you know, with the action elements that we have, um, it's very quick. Uh, but we have a fantastic crew. Again, our veterans on set uh, help make sure that everyone's doing and moving in the right way. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a very quick turnaround. You are, uh, you are on to the next one very quickly. And the Bravo team is based on the most elite unit of U.S. Navy SEALs. I understand that at the outset of the program, you partnered with real life former members of the SEAL team. You just mentioned that you have a few of them as writers on your team. What did you learn from them? What are you learning from them? And, and how do you make sure that you create an accurate portrayal of the team? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, so much. It's, you know, obviously I don't have a military background. So, you know, I would say early on it was really learning the tactical language, learning about ops, learning about, you know, sort of the behind the scenes of how these huge military uh, campaigns get waged. Um, and now it's really transitioned more into um, uh, understanding the character stuff, understanding, you know, what these guys bring home with them, what it's like to come home and feel like a stranger um, in your own home. Um, and so, you know, certainly with, you know, our guys are, are you know, fortunately all doing really well, but they know they have friends who have suffered from TBI, from PTS. They've really helped inform um, a lot of these stories that we're telling that that take a uh, sort of a deeper look at at really the cost of these wars on our on our operators. I'm wondering from the both of you actually being so immersed in these characters and in war, you know how you it, how it has influenced your personal or. Uh, ideological views on the military defense and these forever wars that the U.S. has been engaged in? Well, I mean, I think for Jason Hayes and his sense of leadership, we, we really start to examine like the effects, right? What TBI is all about, what PTS is really all about, and really brings up a really big subject matter of what mental health is really all about. Um, you know, these are characters that we play and that we portray. Um, every actor has their way of getting into those particular roles. Um, so for me, it's uh, uh, mentally and physically, it's, it, it can be very exhausting at times, um, which is why, um, you know, you really have to have that space in order to step out of that character. Um, but for me, it's really about, you know, talking to the real guys that have been impacted by that or have been injured and have war injuries and you see them and you talk to them about their stories and you 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 remain as true as you can to what their 
explaining to you because that's what we really always wanted to do is get it right and be honest with it as best as we could and we wanted to do it in a, in a manner that was realistic to create those emotions for our characters to kind of tap into and spencer have you received any ideas from the u.s navy directly for potential episodes uh we have not no, we do not really, um, you know, we have great support from uh, members of the U.S. Navy, but the uh, institution itself does not, we do not, uh, we have not worked together. They have, they don't seem to want it. But, and honestly, it's because of the subject matter that we take on. I mean, we, you know, to answer your previous question, I think, you know, the more, when you first meet these guys, you're in total awe of them. And as you get to know them more, you kind of want to wrap your arms around them a little bit because you, you see firsthand um, the cost of war. Um, and so that's why, you know, this show is primary goal is to obviously entertain, but we also have this opportunity to shine a spotlight on areas where we can do a lot better for the men and women in uniform and our veterans. And that's why we've taken on TBI, uh, PTS, homeless veterans crisis this year, the opioid crisis in the VA. Um, and so we really think, um, you know, what's so great about this show and what, I think why we have such a deep connection with our audience, particularly vets, is because we take on these tough subjects and, you know, Navy and VA, other institutions don't really like that uh, too much, but uh, that's that's not going to stop us. Well, I assume that that means that you're getting feedback that the depictions of what Navy SEALs go through is fairly realistic. Is that is that accurate? I would say so. I mean, I think some of the feedback I get from veterans who have said, you know, thank you for for honoring um, what we do, or thank you for allowing myself to have enough courage to reach out and get help. Uh, thank you for, you know, giving me some comfort in knowing that um, I will be able to rest knowing that you have shown me some light into my son's world and where he was and if he didn't make it. So we're proud of the fact that the biggest award is being able to hear from people who have been affected by it in a way that is giving them strength and giving them um, an extra push to get help. Um, and, I, and I really find that to be very, very humbling. Yeah, Spencer, what kind of feedback have you received? You know, the highest praise we can get is from a veteran who's, you know, and who says you got it right. Um, you know, season two, we did a storyline about a, a vet suffering from TBI who took his own life in the, the VA parking lot. And that story was largely inspired by a former SEAL and his father uh, worked very closely with us. I wrote that episode. He worked very closely with me. Um, I was really, really, really anxious and nervous about how we were going to execute it. Um, and he called me the morning after watching it and said, you know, he watched with tears in his eyes and we got it right. And to me, that's, that's the highest compliment I've ever gotten for this show. And so, um, hearing from the people who are really doing it, um, you know, it's, it's just very rewarding and I think inspires us to just keep pushing, pushing harder. And, and to that point, which is a fairly yeah. impactful moment that we had, we were watching a, a scene in the screening room and there was at Mark Owen was in another executive producer who was, you know, real seal, right. Had, you know, 12 deployments and uh, he, he's a main guy he had to walk out of the room he got so teared up you know it hit him so hard so we were just like wow he got up and left he couldn't he couldn't deal and um that's that's the kind of type of subject matter we're dealing with and it's hard it's tough but we managed to understand it and um and do it for that purpose and david you've actually previously said that you weren't fully aware of what seal team members actually did before you took on this role and that now you have a much greater appreciation of their work. What have you learned so far that's impressed you the most about the service of Navy SEAL team members? Just their overwhelming um, resilience to um, staying together and being a team and really um, getting the job done, pivoting through adversities. Um, it was It's very impactful for me. Um, and it, um, this showed such pure strength that um, overcoming things is is capable when you have a team behind you. Planning and preparation, um, always a key thing. And um, that in itself um, is all about the heart. And the heart is the fabric of our country. And that is, is the strength of our country. And they solidify that and they keep that alive. And Spencer, you know, I'm wondering what your experience or perception of military service was before you started the show and now how it might have changed your perception of military service at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I always had, you know, respect for it, but, and, um, you know, my father was a military historian, we, you know, a casually military historian, so I had an appreciation uh, growing up, but, it, you know, until you really see it and you're really surrounded by the people who have done it, um, it's really on, it's inspiring. And, um, you know, these guys are, you know, they're so smart, they're so thoughtful, they're so selfless, um, you know, it's just, it really... Um, I mean, you can't help but work on a show like this and have your appreciation grow and really want to do, again, I, it's part of the message of the show is really figuring out ways where we, we need to do better for the people who protect us. Um, you know, I think we've fallen short in too many areas. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, over the five years I've been around these guys, that would, you know, sort of my awareness of, of where we're falling short um, has grown. And as I'm sure you're both well aware, in uh, this past July, for the first time ever, a woman completed a grueling 37-week training program to become a naval special warfare combatant, warfare combatant, boat operators who transport Navy SEALs. Any guess as to when we're going to see our first female Navy SEAL on television? I hope soon. I mean, yeah, I think it's great. I, 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 it's fantastic. I, I mean... I applaud that, and it's a huge, huge endeavor. And I guess it goes to show you the human spirit and what it's about. And um, uh, I applaud that. Spencer, are you are you working on anything? No, absolutely. We have, we've all been following that and very excited by that, inspired by that. Um, you know, truthfully, to get to uh, Dev Group, where our guys uh, work out of, it's you have to go through a few deployments. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know if be a member of Bravo team anytime soon, but certainly, you know. Bravo team interacts with other teams around the world. So we could be seeing something down the road. And I want to pivot a little bit more to the process side of things for both of you. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic obviously forced everyone, including uh, your team, to shut down and wrap up season three a couple episodes early. How did that affect the show and how has shooting resumed? I mean, I, I think in one way or the other, when we were shooting the snow up episode, I was coming down the one I was directing. I remember finishing a long, grueling day out of Big Bear and heading back to the studios. It was like the day that everything ended, right? Everything that you thought was, it was just done. It was like, okay, you know, Tom Hanks has got COVID and it's, you know, they're canceling baseball games and bat, like everything sports, it's, it's everyone's pulling the plug and you're like, what, what is going on? It's like, the, it was the end of the world in a lot of ways of what we knew and remembered of it. So we had to bunker down and figure that out and get in through protocols in order just to get back up through production. And um, we followed those safety protocols. Um, even to this day, we're tested three times. Um, you know, uh, during the week of production, we uh, all wear masks. We have uh, a strict protocol and we do our part in, in maintaining that. But it was definitely a process and it was tough to go through. Has there been any conflict on the set about wearing masks or uh, vaccination mandates? No, we're, we're pretty, we're so efficient. To, you know, we do our show in 10 hours, so we really don't have much time to complain. We, we're a running boat. We are a machine and we're well oiled in a way that it says to us, hey, um, this is what we're doing. We're very efficient. We have such high veteran presence on our show and people that have actually been in those situations. It's like that it talk about a military calendar. It is intense and, uh, and it's well orchestrated. So um, for us, it's really about getting the work done and um, doing what's necessary through the protocols that are out there. And Spencer, the show's first four episodes this season ran as usual on CBS, but that have now switched over to Paramount Plus, a streaming service that charges money. Are you worried that you're going to lose some loyal fans because of this subscri subscription cost? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I've, we definitely have heard from people who unfortunately can't add another streaming service to their to their bill. We understand money's tight. You know, it was not a decision that David or I made. I mean, we're excited for this move and what it can do for the show, but we certainly understand that we are going to unfortunately leave some people behind and we hope that they're able to find the show down the road in, in other ways. But, uh, you know, we, we really are excited about, you know, kind of you know the show is going to remain the show, but we're we're able to tell stories in a grittier, probably even more authentic way. Um, and so, you know, I think it's a it's a minor shift, but uh, it's one that I think has excited me from a writing perspective, and I know the actors have been excited by it as well. So hopefully, the audience feels the same way. Yeah, David, you put a positive spin on the move, saying that it's going to give you guys more creative flexibility here. What ways do you think this is going to help make the program more compelling? 
I think it was just adjusting really, you know, we call it the tip of the spear and being able to pivot, not really putting a spin on it, but saying, hey, this is a way to um, to dive deeper into the subject matters of these these men and these women. Uh, so for us, it, uh, it examines um, the darker corners of the the aspect of what how these characters tick. So that's a very, very exciting thing. So that just leads to the other thing that leads to you know, um, a much more bigger adventure, uh, longer arcs and storytelling, um, personalized uh, interests from where the characters are, where they're going, what their relationships are in in mission, what it's like out in the wire, outside the wire, back home, how they're accepted. Um, we can get uh, a little bit more extreme with that and uh, and raw with that, right? You can go through it a little deeper and at the end, you, there's a bigger reward. And before we're out of time, uh, Spencer, I understand that you're going to be offering a promo code so that veterans are able to watch the show free for a month. I'm wondering what that code is that they need to use. Shh, the secret code. <laughs> Very secret code. Yes, no, it's, uh, I sh you know, Paramount Plus is, you know, again, to your previous question, very aware that uh, not everyone can come on board uh, and follow us. And so they're offering this great code for veterans. Um, the code is veterans and it's for one month free of Paramount Plus, um, where you'll get to binge a lot of our great episodes. And unfortunately, we're all out of time for today. We're going to have to leave it there. But thanks so much for joining us, David Boreanis and Spencer Hudnut. Uh, thank you again. I appreciate thanks. it. Thank you so much for having us. As always, thanks for watching. To check out what interviews we have com coming up on Washington Post Live, please head to WashingtonPostLive.com to register and find more information about all of our upcoming programs. I'm Jackie Alamani. Thanks so much for your time today.